Trotsky's Bakery, the French people show. Trotsky's Bakery, Tim and Terry will say, the best of cookies ever in the USA. Winsky Day for us, we have to have traffic cops out front, we have to have a tent. Uh, to supply the, the line wraps around the building. Last year we had a line for 13 and a half hours. A line of 25 to 50 people for 13 and a half hours. They do apricot, uh, creamed poppy seed, lekvar, which is like a Polish buttered prune, and uh, rose, which is like a rose flavored jelly marmalade with blended actual rose petals in it, and the fifth flavor is just our, our plain punchy. They say, do you have lemon, do you have custard, do you have raspberry? I, I just, to me that's not, then you're just filling dough like you're filling a, a donut. So that's why we stick with the traditional Polish flavors. Uh, you can get a steak anywhere, but if you want the USDA Prime Choice, you want to buy the best, and that's us. Since I introduced the rose jelly, it really takes me back to the early 60s when my mom would just stand there and make that rose jelly, and I couldn't wait to put that on my toast in the morning. So now it took, my, when my slogan is, uh, taste a memory in every bite, so I think that's really true when you, a lot of people that, we can come as close to their parents' recipe of punchkis as we can, but I know when I bite a rose punchki, it's just like my mom being here with me. Take, uh, it's about 20 minutes to mix here, and then it'll be 20 minutes on the table uh, for it to uh, rise up. And then we, we form them in this machine over here, which you'll see it's, uh, we use one that's it's from the 30s, right, boss? The, the Fortuna? It's a technology they, they, they don't make in this size anymore. It's just like table size. But we have one from the 1930s that was made in West Germany that they don't make anymore. So. After we round them up, it's another um, another 10 minutes on the table. Then it's about a half an hour in the proof box, and um, and, and then we fry them up. So we got to round them up to uh, three pounds, 12 ounce balls, so that way they can fit in this this old machine that we use to to, to ball them up. So I got three pounds, 12 ounces, and then they got to sit for another 10 minutes. <laughs> this is called a sheeter. It's like an old school. You know, it's in pretty much every pastry shop. Out. We get them over here. This is an updated version of, of what they used to use back in the 30s, but it's a it's a rounder plate. Boom, we're ready for rolling. Follow me. This is the most important step. Um, pull this guy down here. This flattens the dough out so it's all even. Push this down. It's cut now. Turn the machine on. It's like an ignition sequence. It's like so old that. Here we go. This is, it, this is this is where all the finesse is. It's a kushki dance. It takes years to get together, but we perfected it. Boom. Oh, so I had two that messed up, which means my dance is a little flawed. I don't know if there was a drought, maybe in the. It would have been the early '90s. There was a drought or something, but the flour wasn't just coming in right. Um, we couldn't figure out what to do. And I'm like, you know, hey guys, listen, I got this idea. Maybe we should just do a punchki dance while we're cutting them. And maybe that might put a little more, more pizzazz in the dough to help it pop a little more. So, I mean, I tried it once or twice, did a couple dry runs. Mine, it took a couple years to perfect. But with the other gentleman I showed you earlier, Dave Dix, Dave Dix's punchki dance is completely flawless. He's, every time he dances out cutting his punchkis, we get perfectly rounded balls. To know that we have satisfied so many different palates throughout Northern Ohio, it's, it's such a great feeling and I feel like I do my parents proud when I do that to carry on the tradition of punchkis and the Polish tradition in Northern Ohio.